Paleontology as a field has been frothing at the mouth in 2023. We got a new sperm whale-sized predatory ichthyosaur, Bruchathchaeosaurus is valid and absolutely enormous, and now this? I'm sorry, that has to be a typo. You're telling me that there was a basilosaurid whale that could have weighed over 180 tons? Biondo Chietal 2023 described Parasitus Colossus, colossal Peruvian whale, a basilosaurid that blows every other discovery this year out of the water. The other basilosaurids we already knew about aren't anything to scoff at either. Basilosaurus was actually the first prehistoric whale ever discovered unearthed in 1834, although scientists originally thought it was a gigantic snake. Its name means king lizard and I can see why. It does look fairly serpentine after all, although more complete fossils showed it was actually a slender predatory whale with complex dentition like canines and molars. Emphasis on slender. While Basilosaurus isis, its bulkier species, was up to 18 meters long, it may have weighed less than 7 tons since it was so thin. Parasitus is a different story. The paper that described it was called A Heavyweight Early Whale Pushes the Boundaries of Vertebrate Morphology, and Heavyweight is right. Every once in a while a discovery comes along that makes us question how much we really know about biology and science in general. Parasitus is one of those discoveries. The article summary also compares mammalian bones to a baguette in the first page. Nice. But there is a point to the baguette analogy. Most mammals have bones with a soft, spongy interior, trabecular bone, and a hard outer covering, like a baguette's crust. The proportions between these two types of bone vary depending on the ecological needs of the animal. Hippos are an example of a mammal that has a very high proportion of compact bone since they need to be heavy to move at the bottom of rivers. Whales, on the other hand, are mostly trabecular bones since they're pursuit predators that go after krill and plankton or large and fast prey items like giant squid. Lightweight bones are the way to go if you're planning on moving quickly in the water, but Parasitus is just built different. Nearly its entire skeleton is compact bone, so this lad was dense. Imagine a whale-sized hippo, and then make it a snake. The skeleton was discovered in Ica province in southern Peru, and the material consists of 13 vertebrae, 4 ribs, and a partial pelvis. While that's definitely incomplete, the authors had enough data on related cetaceans to calculate a body length of 17 to 20 meters. That sounds fairly standard for large whales, but what sets this chonky gentleman apart is its, and I quote, extremely packy osteosclerotic postcranium. That just means that its bones were exceptionally thick and heavy. The authors already ruled out distortion or disease as a potential cause, since this is actually a diagnostic characteristic for the family of whales it belonged to, and it was uniform across every part of the skeleton they discovered. Now listen to this. All extant cetaceans, including the largest balaenoterids and balaenids, show the usual relatively thin vertebral apophyses. Pachyostosis substantially increases the volume of the new species vertebrae, representing almost twice that of the largest vertebra of a 25 meter long blue whale. Scaling up the vertebrae of C. peruvianus, a smaller, non pachyostotic close relative, it can be estimated that the pachyostosis of P. colossus results in an excess of over 350% in overall volume. Everything about this animal was designed to be heavy. Its ribs lacked medullary bone entirely, and even its vascularized bones have extremely narrow canals, making room for more dense bone. Parasitus' skeleton alone weighed between 5.3 and 7.6 tons. That's up to 2.9 times the weight of a blue whale skeleton 5 meters longer. Look at the difference. This, this is just absurd. Who let this happen? Bianucci's team used a technique called skeletal fractioning to calculate Parasitus' living body mass scaling it up from known ratios of mammal body size relative to the weight of their skeletons. Scaling from manatees and using the absolute minimum skeletal volume estimate brought Parasitus to a whopping 85 tons. That's the most conservative estimate possible, and it's already over 20 tons heavier than an average Otodus megalodon. And the high end? Brace yourself. With the maximum skeletal volume and using the ratios from extant whales, Parasitus would have weighed 340 tons. That's more than triple the size of the most recent conservative estimates for the Aust Colossus, more than six times the mass of the high end for the Swiss Tyrant, and half again as heavy as the biggest blue whale ever recorded. I thought this was a typo when I first read it. Of course, we have to recognize that's the absolute maximum calculation. The authors settled on a mean of 180 metric tons. Oh, only 180 tons, you say? Pathetic. That's only more than twice the size of Argentinosaurus. And this thing was close to skeletally mature, but still growing. Indeterminate growth is common for whales, so that makes sense, but you're telling me this thing could have gotten even bigger? So what did it eat? 
Basilosaurs are generally adapted for carnivory, with canines and molars for chewing flesh, but we don't have the preserved skull in this case. Since Paracetus' bones are so dense, the authors theorize it may have been a benthic feeder or scavenger. It didn't have the flexibility or speed to chase prey in the open ocean like its close relatives, so a likely explanation is that Paracetus terrorized the shallows like an apocalyptic manatee. It would have crunched on crustaceans, bottom-dwelling fish, and mollusks, and bullied everything in its surroundings into giving it access to any corpses in the area. Look at this thing. What could have stopped it from doing whatever it wanted? Even if it wasn't a pursuit predator, if it was equipped with a regular basilosaurid skull, it could have taken on anything. Paracetus may not have been a raptorial cetacean like Liviatan, but it was even more of a monster. Thanks for watching. Click to subscribe for more paleontology content. If you're thrilled by the idea of a shallow dwelling blimp of death, share this video with your friends. You can join the Vivid End Discord server and subreddit via the links in the description. I'll see you next time.